Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and welcome to Pluto. This is a New Horizons mission, a recreation of it back in 2015, when it's going to be passing very close to Pluto, taking some amazing photos, and then heading off to its next destination. And there is beautiful Pluto. And gone. Anyway, let's go back to it for a second. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to try to terraform this beautiful dwarf planet. How? Well, you'll find out in this video. Welcome to What The Math. So, as the New Horizons mission flies away into the other solar uh, system regions, we're actually going to be focusing on this incredible object. Uh, you can see there's a barrier center right here between Pluto and um, its biggest satellite, uh, Charon. And what we're going to be doing is we're essentially going to try to change this into a habitable um, dwarf planet with relatively good temperature, possibly some liquid on the surface, and uh, basically something that humans would enjoy living on. How? Well, there's obviously several ways we can do this in the game. I'm going to go for the, one of the easiest ways, uh, but you could actually do it a slightly more difficult way. And let me just show you what I mean by this first, because I'd like you guys to try this yourselves if you have the game. So if you actually take Sharon, give it a little bit of atmosphere, let's actually give it maybe some surface pressure here. Uh, and if you then start condensing its size by fixing its mass and decreasing its size dramatically, Let's start with one kilometer in size. You'll notice that it's going to start getting super hot. It's actually going to start changing into a star-like object. And as it becomes a star-like object with a ridiculously high temperature, it's going to provide some of that temperature to its partner, Pluto. And this will actually um, kind of warm it up. It's actually a feasible strategy for terraforming Pluto. But we're not going to do it this way. We're going to do it the lazy way. We're going to go back to Pluto and essentially um, pretend that suddenly, for some reason, we found a way to increase the atmospheric pressure on Pluto and to maintain it somehow without it losing the atmosphere to the outside solar system. And we're going to basically going to increase um, the atmosphere of this object. Now, we know that Pluto already has a bit of atmosphere, and uh, mostly nitrogen, and um, it's always uh, it always replenishes it from something. So we don't really know how it replenishes it, but we know it happens. But we are basically found a way to suddenly put a lot of atmospheric pressure here. Like we're talking about something equivalent to the atmosphere of Venus. So in other words, you know, what if the atmospheric pressure here was similar to the atmospheric pressure on Venus, which is about what 93 atmospheres, I think. It's about 93 93 atmospheres. So suddenly we have this highly pressurized object, dwarf planet, that has a very similar atmosphere to Venus. And to maintain it, we're going to give it artificial magnetic field by enabling the this here, by giving it some atmospheric, uh, some magnetic field, uh, similar in size to Earth. But it's maybe a little bit stronger than Earth, it's about one Gauss. So, that's done. So now the atmosphere will not be escaping because the magnetic field that we've created will be protecting it uh, from the solar radiation. And as you can see, the surface temperature is actually increasing as we speak. So let's see how high this temperature will actually go. And we also need to remind ourselves that for the most part, Pluto is actually it has a lot of water. It's a very sort of liquidy object. Um, so when it warms up enough, we'll actually give it some water. There's a lot of water on the surface. It's very likely actually mostly composed of like at least five to 10% water, but at least the surface. The surface is actually all water ice. All of these beautiful structures on the surface, all of these mountains, all of these strange, uh, strangely shaped objects that we've discovered over the last few years, they're basically all made of uh, water ice and to some extent, maybe some other ices. So when this planet becomes uh, terraformed, it's going to melt. And you can see we've already started losing some of the atmosphere because the atmosphere here is so thick that um, we've created a kind of a tail behind Pluto as the solar radiation attacks it. But because our magnetosphere is pretty strong, we shouldn't really worry about losing too much. 
All right, so let's wait a little bit. We're going to wait for this uh, planet to warm up and to get to the point where it's actually relatively Earth-like. So right now the temperature is still actually kind of low, despite the greenhouse effect being um, 293 degrees Celsius. So we may need to um, increase the atmospheric pressure just a little bit more. So let's say we've actually discovered some kind of a super interesting gas that's heavy enough to actually stay on the surface of um, Pluto and that is comfortable enough um, and neutral enough like nitrogen for us to actually breathe. So some sort of um, heavy yet not too extreme gas. And because of this gas, the actual temperature on the surface will be increasing quite dramatically due to the greenhouse effect. And these will be usually um, caused by things like carbon dioxide, um, the water, vapor, and so on and so forth. So we need to wait a little bit more for this planet to warm up. And we're going to maybe, let's just actually fix it at a value of about double of uh, pressure on Venus. And just like that, after a few months, I was able to find that sweet spot. Okay, maybe not so sweet. It's a little bit too hot, actually. I'm, I'm going to actually increase the albedo to more real, uh, realistic value of 36%. And uh, we also need to decrease the surface pressure just a little bit to maybe about 80 atmospheric pressures. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit better. So at this point, we're going to actually reach a temperature that's going to be very similar to the temperature on Earth. And uh, the way we did this is by basically uh, changing the surface pressure to 78 atmospheric pressures. Okay, maybe a little bit less than that. Maybe 50. 50 atmospheric pressures, maybe even less. No, actually 50 works. And at this point, I think the temperature will actually stabilize at the average temperature very similar to Earth, close to about 15 degrees Celsius. So yeah, it's a little bit too pressurized, of course, but remember, uh, humans are actually able to survive in really high pressures. The way, you know, the reason that uh, you can actually scuba dive and go into really, really high depths is because our body is able to withstand ridiculously high pressures because it's we're mostly made of, uh, made up of water and water cannot be compressed very easily. We wouldn't be able to live here for a very long time without uh, suffering some serious um, problems with bones, for example, but you know, in the future, if we're actually able to create such a strange and unusual world by increasing the atmospheric pressure, I'm sure we'll be able to find a way for us to survive on this world as well. So, right, so we have the necessary surface pressure, or I guess some surface pressure. We have the temperature of about 14 degrees Celsius. We're still missing water. So let's give it some water. Oh, the water doesn't want to seem to stay on the surface because in this game, sometimes... If the planet or an object doesn't really have strong enough magnetosphere, and specifically for some uh, objects that are not very large, the water just kind of escapes without even, without actually being deposited on the surface at all. So as you can see, it suddenly starts escaping. So this is a bit of a bug here. And this is actually what Pluto would look like if it was um, terraform. It would be basically a water world. But in reality, as soon as we get rid of all of this water, it's going to change back into its normal shape and also increase its temperature back to 15 degrees Celsius. So this is a bit of a bug in the game, but basically you can imagine that this is what uh, the actual Pluto would look like if it was terraformed, yet if the water on the surface did not melt. So maybe this is like a uh, temperature of about minus one degree Celsius. So not exactly terraformed, but, you know, close enough. But just for fun, let's actually give Pluto just a little bit of water, making it sort of half a water world with just a few lakes, a few um, oceans here and there. And let's see what it actually looks like as a perfectly terraformed world. So we're going to give it a few seconds to kind of warm up. We're going to give it some temperature just so that the water actually melts. And here we go. Look at that. This is, this is essentially a terraformed Pluto. Very unusual looking object. Very, very strange. All of these uh, unusual creators are creating this somewhat uh, island-like water world. And so there you go. That's Terraform Pluto right here. And anyway, so hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching various space videos and wants to learn through video games. 
And in the meanwhile, let's accelerate time and see what happens to our water world Pluto with time. And come back tomorrow to learn something else, to watch another video, and potentially learn something about space that you didn't know before. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.